presento il professor Nazarov dell'Istituto per problemi meccanici per l'ingegneria dell'Università Statale di San Pietroburgo e eh, ci terrà un corso, un cinque incontri, ogni incontro saranno un paio di lezioni eh, dal titolo Introduzione ai metodi asintotici eh, nella meccanica. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and thank you very much for inviting me here and I and my wife are enjoying the beauty of Italy and also the taste of Italy. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, so I, I'm working in institution of mechanical engineering. So, but I'm mathematician. But nevertheless, uh, also I, 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 I have to, to, to apply this mathematics. And uh, during my, this short course, I will be speaking about just application. So uh, I will try to, to reduce the complexity of uh, presentation uh, to the necessary minimum, not to write too much formula, too much calculations, but uh, to show ideas and to show uh, some, um, some features of, of the method. Of course, if you want to Uh, to apply the methods, uh, asymptotic methods, uh, to concrete mechanical problems, uh, it need, uh, to be, needs to be uh, more, more precise in uh, calculations. But here, main ideas. And what I'm going to start with is just a problem, uh, how to model defects. So, usually bodies, elastic bodies, uh, has some defects inside matter cracks, voids and so on. And uh, we are speaking about dirty medias. So media is not clean all this, it's dirty. So and let us consider the simplest problem of this type. So we have a domain omega in R3 with a smooth boundary. I will speak later on uh, about Uh, some, uh, yes, this is a boundary, so, uh, of some angular points, but now the domain has a smooth boundary. Let us introduce there a small opening, a small hole cavity inside it. And the question is how this cavity influences the whole state in the body. Uh, to do the asymptotic analysis, I would like to, to consider only the simplest Uh, directly a problem for Poisson equation, so it's this one. I will explain in a later bit the notation. A later bit now means one minute. So this is the problem. And the domain where we are, uh, where we consider this problem is just the following. We take a domain omega in R3, as I, as, uh, <coughs> I wrote there. Then we create a hole, and this means that we take domain and we subtract from this domain a small hole. A small hole is denoted by omega epsilon. Bar means that we uh, close this domain. And omega epsilon is but the following set. It's a points x in R3 such that the rapid very, uh, coordinate system, the stretch coordinate system, xi, which is equal to epsilon minus 1x. So we take the uh, usual coordinate system, compress it epsilon times, and uh, not compressed, sorry, inflate uh, epsilon time. And um, consider that this, uh, this new stretched coordinate, coordinates belong to a fixed domain omega. So we take, this is the domain omega, we take some other domain omega small, uh, then compress it into very small domain, this is omega epsilon, subtract from, from the domain and obtain domain omega epsilon. So this is a procedure. And what is of interest here is how uh, 
the field is changed due to nucleation of this small hole. <coughs> to do so, we need to apply asymptotic analysis More precisely, we need to apply a method of compound asymptotic expansions. There is several uh, methods to, to construct asymptotic expansions and uh, Next lecture, I, I will explain a bit more about other methods in order to, to create a model of this, of this small defect. But now we apply a simplest variant of asymptotic analysis, so a method of compound asymptotic expansion. And this means that we want to find the solution, omega uh, u epsilon of x, uh, as a solution of the limit problem. We have to understand what does it mean. What, what happens when, uh, in main when uh, epsilon tends to zero and becomes zero? And then we, we need to find the corrector. It is not clear what this corrector means now, but uh, it's clear that it must appear because the appearance of whole, uh, of course, influences this state. What does it mean u0? First we have to answer this question and then to guess uh, how to construct correction. u0. So when omega epsilon, ten, uh, when epsilon tends to 0, uh, omega epsilon shrinks to one point and one point is neglectable for uh, Laplace equation because... Yes. It's a three-dimensional case, and uh, there is no trace for, for solutions uh, in, 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 in this case. So if we, we want to, to find a generalized solution in H1, uh, I will explain later what does it mean. Uh, so then there is no hope uh, that uh, there is a trace of this function in this space. This means that it looks that... Uh, at the limit, epsilon equal to zero, the hole disappears completely. So we can forget, we can glue this hole, we can forget about it. So that's why u0 must be considered as a solution of the following problem. It's a, again, uh, Laplacian of u0 is equal to f, but now in the whole domain, and on the boundary we, we still have this Zero so this is the limit problem. At the same time, we know that if right hand side f belongs to L2 of omega, the Lebesgue space of function integrate uh, so with the norm. Do, uh, do, right. do it. Do I need to explain what does it mean, or uh, it's common knowledge, I hope. Mm, definirlo L2, lo conoscete o no? Simbolismo. So, so the norm in this space is this one, so f of x squared, x squared. So if you have a right-hand side from this space, then they exist unique generalized solution belonging to space A0, 1, omega. What is here? Is it here? It's a uh, Hilbert space with the following norm. Which is to be obtained as a completion of uh, functions which are smooth in domain, vanish on the uh, boundary, this is just this zero, and has this, this norm. So, uh, then first, there exists solution of uh, 
generalized solution of the problem. But also, the CNS domain is, as, is assumed to be uh, smooth, then they exist, this solution belongs to H2. And now, a few words about this space. So. So, again, I will write that F belongs to F2 of omega, uh, U0 belongs to H2 of omega. This means that function itself, its gradient, and second gradient, which is but a connection of second order derivative of function U, belongs to F2. And this can be easily seen, because not easily, but it can be easily predicted. Because you see that this function belongs to it too, so Laplacian belongs to it too. It means that uh, second order derivatives belong to it in it too. It belongs to it too. Uh, so this is a theorem, but I, I'm not going to comment it. So it, uh, let us take as a granted this fact. And also uh, we have to write down as the asymptotic form of solution. We write that it's, it's some sort of Taylor formula. We write the solution itself near to the point zero, which is a coordinate origin. So again, this is the domain, x a coordinate origin, and around this origin we created a hole. Near to this point, solution mainly is takes its value. Now, because uh, solution has become smooth due to the uh, theorem I mentioned here. Uh, due to the fact the solution is smooth, we can speak about its it value at point zero, at this point, and also about the rest. Rest is the following. It, you can uh, think about... Let me write this in the following way. That you, uh, zero of x is equal to for capital of modulo x as x tends to zero. So the main as a main part, namely the value, is taken out uh, function. And uh, uh, this re uh, remained the asymptotic remainder u u wave zero uh, is becoming smaller and smaller when the point comes to zero. This means that mainly the discrepancy of this solution on this uh, hole, on the boundary of the hole, is given by this function, or by this uh, magnitude, by this quantity. So, because if we speak again about the original problem, this one and this one, uh, we have taken into account that uh, equation has right hand side. We just uh, we just solve this equation everywhere, so it doesn't matter that there is a hole for the equation. But the only discrepancy, the, the, the only lack of this solution u zero, and this solution doesn't satisfy equation here. Oh, boundary condition here. Sorry. So. Uh, they appear the following formula that u0 on the boundary of this hole is equal mainly to u0 of 0 plus or capital of epsilon. Epsilon is the size of this uh, hole and x is of order epsilon when x is, is on the boundary. On the boundary means very close to, to the point, so on the distance epsilon. And that's why, in order to construct character, we need to compensate for this part only. 
we need to compensate for this part only. This is the first our conclusion, and now we can we can start constructing asymptotic character. So just character here. So I erase it. And right here, the answer to our previous question, asymptotic character. How we have to find it? So, as I explained, this is the question. We need to compensate for this discrepancy. This is the main part of discrepancy. And uh, the idea now is to use the stressed variables. Stress coordinates, sorry. It's better to say coordinates. So instead of x coordinates, which are nothing but the coordinate system somehow here. So x, x1, x2, x3. And this coordinate system is good to describe in far field, to describing this uh, body. But in order to, to get information near to the small defect, we need to pass over the new coordinates xi, which is epsilon minus 1x. So we stretch coordinates. And I would like to recall that domain omega epsilon was just described with help of these coordinates. So it has a sense. You describe the defect with the help of these coordinates and you try to solve the problem here. So, then, what we have? Instead of domain omega epsilon under this stretching of variable, we will get the following domain. It's xi such that Xi does not belong to omega and epsilon Xi belongs to omega without bar, omega capital. This is the result of stretching of variables because original domain was X, uh, such uh, points X that X belongs to omega, it is written just here, and epsilon minus 1 X does not belong to omega bar. So it is written the same, but a new coordinate system. Now, if we set epsilon to zero, then any point will come to domain omega. This means that instead of domain omega epsilon, we need to consider, and now I cannot write such passage, but something of this type. So it's uh, again guess. It's we have first to, to guess about how we want to construct a solution and then to add this solution and verify if, if, it is, if, if it was correct, guess or not. And then, instead of this, we, we need to consider a new domain, which is R3, because any point xi from, from the space will, uh, will be inside domain if epsilon sufficiently small, and we perform the whole uh, limit passage minus omega bar this is just this and what is this is nothing but exterior domain so we take domain omega close it so include the boundary and now we live in the exteriority of this domain so I draw a sum but I mean that uh, we now are here so this is the uh, first step in our consideration and the second step is but the following uh, we take Laplacian delta x which is nothing but of course uh, sum of second order derivative and uh, make this change of variables instead of dx there will appear dx i and dx i over dx 
this term is equal to epsilon minus 1. So instead of this Laplacian, there appear 1 over epsilon square Laplacian with respect to psi coordinates. This results in the following observation. So if we had a function which satisfies this equation, after going over to, to stretch coordinate system, we will have a, 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 the following equation in psi coordinates. So the following equation. Epsilon fr from here, 1 over epsilon square, comes to the right. It's a small factor, so if you send epsilon to zero, this disappears completely. This is one argument, and the other argument that we have taken into account f while solving the problem for u zero. So that's why the first uh, step in, uh, in the further consideration is the following. So we want to find a correction a character as a sum function which depends on rapid variable on stretch coordinates. So now this is a remaining, we need to then estimate. And first conclusion due to this consideration is the following that function W dependent on coordinate psi must be harmonic for any in the, in the exterior domain G. What's about boundary conditions? Boundary conditions comes from this formula. We know that due to this fact, the discrepancy, the traits of this function is of order epsilon, is written here. So W must mainly uh, compensate for this constant. That's why we write that W of psi is equal to minus u0 zero of 0 when psi belongs to d omega, and this is just the same as dj. So this is a problem which we have found find by guessing. So we, we now construct a problem, and the next step is to prove that the problem we constructed has a solution which can satisfy our wish. So, what is our wish? Which can, uh, solution we need? So, um, we have an assumption that mainly solution is given by u0. So, this means that at a distance from the de defect, solution u epsilon coincide with u0. What does it mean at a distance? At a distance, due to this change of variable means at infinity because epsilon for us is rather small not rather small, it's very small parameter so what we have to add is that v of psi tends to zero as psi tends to infinity so we need to find a harmonic function which is a specific constant on the boundary and vanishes or decays at infinity. So we have formulated the problem for character, and in this uh, problem, the character is called boundary layer. So we now need to speak about boundary layer. Specification. What, what is the distinguishing feature of the boundary layer? The, the distinguishing feature is the boundary layer is concentrated either near to one point or near to a curve or near to the boundary. So that's why it's called boundary layer. Why it is a boundary layer in this case? Because point zero, the origin of the, uh, of the coordinate system, the centrum of this defect is regarded as a point of the boundary because uh, we, we, we somehow uh, have to 
Okay, so this is that's why it's a boundary layer. Uh, we have a problem for it. And in, indeed, it is known that this problem has a solution which satisfies all our wishes. Namely, uh, function W satisfies the following relation. And W is but decaying harmonic function which is equal to 1. These coefficients minus u0 of 0 was taken as a factor here. So now 1 is left for W capital. And this is for psi in G. This is for psi on the boundary, which is again this thing, and uh, W of Xi has a decay as uh, not plus as Xi tends to, to infinity. I just say it has a decay. So, but it is known the defect and the decay pro uh, property are known. Moreover, an asymptotic form of this solution is known. Because it's nothing but a uh, electric potential, or capacity potential. So, of, of, uh, of course, this um, uh, name came from electricity. So, capacity is just an energy which can be kept by, by a body uh, while uh, it char charges, charged with one on the boundary with a unit charge. So, it is known that W of Xi behaves in the following way at infinity. Its capacity of body omega divided by 4 pi model Xi So this is the behavior of solution at infinity. We have satisfied this uh, capacity potential is harmonic function, and capacity potential equals to one on the boundary of the body. So, and moreover, we have got the following representation. What is here? It's fundamental solution of the Laplacian in R three. Multiply with a constant which depends only on the body. And this constant is called capacity. For the ball of radius 1, capacity is equal to 1. Yes, I made a mistake. This is a nasty thing. Because, I'm sorry. Uh, because in electricity, they, they define capacity without 4 pi, which is very inconvenient. Uh, so that's why capacity of unit ball is 1. So in my notation, uh, so capacity is its, uh, electric capacity. Capacity. But it is very inconvenient to, to consider this thing because fundamental solution is with 4 pi. So in, in order to have, uh, to comfort me in, in further calculations and as a consequence to comfort you, because formula will be easier, it's better to write in such way so that C omega is equal to uh, 4 pi capacity. And we will express everything in terms of, of this constant. Of course, it doesn't matter if they exist 4 pi or not, because it is not 0 and we can divide it. Good. So this is the
bound to the layer. Now, the next step. The next step. We have got the following expansion. It is not justified yet, but we have uh, derived it. The question is, can we find something else? Can we continue the procedure of constructing? So let us write here epsilon u1. Sorry, here x of course of x and then we don't know. So now the question concern if it's possible to find this term. Uh, why? Why we uh, are not going to stop just finding this correction? Because we want to find an in in influence of this solution of this small hole on the, on the solution. So, we have find influence near to the hole. But what happens far away? Far away, this function decays, as we see. So, we don't know. That's why we, uh, the, the second step is to find u1. So, this is our immediate objective, is to find u1. Uh, what we can say, Immediately we can say that this is a harmonics. Why? Because u1, u0 satisfy the Poisson equation, so the right hand side f has been compensated. Uh, w is harmonic, so it brings no 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 discrepancy in the homogeneous equation after. Uh, taking into the account is zero. So u1, that's why also must be harmonics. So I write this thing. Now about boundary conditions. We need to fill this gap. So let us recall structure of solution W u small of xi. We have this term here. So we need to re rewrite this solution, this asymptotic form in stretch coordinates and then we have minus u0 of 0 w of x divided by epsilon and we put Instead, uh, on, on pl uh, place of W, we, we put asymptotic formula for it. So what we have is the following, U0 of 0. Here, C omega divided over 4 pi, modal xi divided by epsilon, this is just this thing, plus O capital of, I'm sorry, misprint, slip of the chalk, minus 1. So it's 1 divided by modular x squared, epsilon squared, better to write in such a way. And so we, we, we can rewrite this formula in the following way. It's minus u0 of 0. Epsilon, it comes from this. C omega, it comes from this and 1 over 4 pi modular x plus and here we have epsilon squared we have this formula and what does it mean that the main term here is of order epsilon it is here and the next term is of order epsilon at a distance from the point if x is positive, but in, near to the point, near to the small hole we introduce into the domain, and this is the entire uh, 
uh, this becomes of order epsilon square, so this correction is of order one. So this representation has sense only at the distance of the perturbation of the domain. But this is clear, because near to the point we have this term as a whole, we cannot divide it according to this formula, because this asymptotical form formula works only at infinity. But our, not our, the, the boundary d omega is just at the distance of the, because if you want to consider defects close to the boundary, this is another, a bit another story. Also, it, everything works uh, in main, but formally to build a, bit, a little bit different. So, for this boundary, this term is of order epsilon because modulo x is strictly positive on the power. And that's why clearly we have to put this term to this place. Because you see here epsilon, here epsilon. So this function compensate discrepancy of these two ter terms on the boundary d omega. And since u0 originally satisfies the Dirich homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition, we are left with the following e e expression here. Just to take this term to kill epsilon because we have epsilon here and put in the boundary condition. So this is the conclusion. So we have got Maybe we have what? Sine is minus? Sine is minus, yes. Sine is minus because uh, this sum... Mm -hmm. Stop. Yes, you are right. Uh, here minus. Here plus. Thank you very much. No, no. It's minus, yes. But here plus, yes, yes, yes. So thank you. Uh, yes, it's just because u1 plus w1 must be zero. And uh, w1 main is the thing. So what is um, a significant point here is that we have modulum x downstairs. But it doesn't bring any problem since boundary d omega is a, at a distance from the origin. So it's a smooth function on the boundary. And then there exist smooth solution. We have found the second asymptotic term. Uh, in principle, it's possible to continue and construct further and further terms. It's like a Schwartz algorithm. You solve one problem, then other problem, one problem, then other problem. Step by step, you can construct as uh, long series as you wish. But let us stop here, because first, we are limited uh, by uh, assumptions that f belongs to L2, so it's not extremely smooth function. In order to construct the whole asymptotic series, it's necessary to have completely smooth function. And uh, moreover, for our main goal, which I can fulfill in uh, after some additional estimation, consideration, and so on, uh, so is to model the defect. And modeling means taking into account first correction term. And as we know, that near to the boundary, this is the first correction term, and the distance for the boundary, this one is the correction term. So I, I suspect that we can make a break, a yeah. short break, because it's just a logical point. Big okay. means uh, in the sense that I want to skip details. Because there is strong uh, maximum principle and so on, it, it has no relation. Let us uh, suspect, uh, let us uh, assume that a function u capital is harmonic in the domain omega epsilon. Let us assume that it satisfied the
boundary condition. F is not good for boundary conditions. Z. The maximum principle says that modulo of u of x is smaller than the value of the function on the boundary. In principle, uh, maximum principle says that the uh, maximum of harmonic functions uh, always is on the boundary. So, and since on the boundary we uh, control the function, we can write this thing. And first is maximum, and then we apply the same principle to minus u. So, we have two-sided estimation. So now let us look for our formula and uh, apply this principle. What we have? First of all, we need to write, to find what does it mean Laplacian of the remainder, Laplacian of this U wave. And this is zero, because Laplacian of this function is F, Laplacian of this function is, is f, nothing uh, is left. This is Laplacian 0, this is Laplacian 0, so the conclusion is this, this function is, uh, has a, uh, is a harmonic. So we are just nearby this problem. And now let us calculate the discrepancy on the boundary. So we need to know what does it mean u wave of x, uh, u wave of x, yes, for x belonging to d omega. First we consider the outer part of the boundary, the inner. First this, u epsilon of x, this is 0, minus u0 of x, this is 0 plus, minus, again. Here, what we have, there was a formula, I erased it, but I will write that this is minus u0 zero of 0, and here stands uh, c omega epsilon divided for 4 pi modulo x plus O capital of epsilon squared divided by modulo x squared. This is uh, this term, this is this term, and then minus, minus epsilon, this epsilon, and c omega u0 of 0, c omega divided by 4 pi modulo x. This is a, a value the trace of u1 on the boundary. So now, now let us look. So 0, 0, it's OK. This is for the epsilon square. And those are the same with different sign. Minus, minus is plus, minus here. So thanks for minus, otherwise, no, no, no. Thanks because otherwise we, we have no uh, cancelling of these two terms. So this cancels with this one, so finally we obtain O capital of epsilon square. So the function u wave epsilon is of order epsilon square on the boundary. Now we have to look on the second part of the boundary inside. So u, u epsilon of x is zero. Are the original solution satisfy homogeneous condition? This guy, I recall that we wrote it 
is this way. And this is nothing but odd of epsilon because boundary is situated close to the uh, close to the point zero. Omega epsilon surrounds, but at the distance of O of epsilon. So this is small term. Then this function, uh, this function, sorry, itself is. plus, it's better to write minus, minus u0 of 0. It's this function. Because w of xi is equal to minus u0 of 0. It was just our choice. And again, we have cancelling. These terms cancels with this one. And uh, finally, we have to take into account this. So it's minus epsilon. And what I can say about this function? I mentioned this is a smooth function. So I, the only thing I can write O of 1. So finally, at the boundary, interior boundary, we have O of epsilon. You see that, unfortunately, we have different orders for different terms. This is a rather predictable thing. We were lazy because we constructed first correction term here, but it's first correction term. But this is a second term. It's first correction term in uh, slow variables, but it's a second term in slow variables. That's why on the outer boundary we have better uh, estimate of discrepancy than the inner boundary. If we, we write here second correction term, we will equalize the discrepancies. But from here it follows, from our consideration, it follows in the theorem 1 that for our problem we have the following estimate. This is the result of our two considerations. It means that solution is small everywhere, but it is of order epsilon. And now we had come to the very important question. The estimate of Riemann is of the same order as this term. What was the reason for us to construct it? No reason, because we can unify these two terms, unite these two terms in one term, and we will get the same estimate. Uh, now we, uh, fortunately, some Mathematics almost is finished, and now we can gain from our considerations. Now uh, I, I can explain the philosophy. philosophy. So, I just have said that what you have uh, as asymptotic expansion, what you put into remainder it depends on yourself. So, we took this norm. First of all, of course, because of simplicity. But second, we wanted to estimate uniformly in the whole domain. Then we have got this result. But if we speak about faraway field, if we don't want to have something here, estimate here, then we can hold that this remainder in other norm is smaller. And what is the reason for this hope? The reason is the following. Let us calculate norms. Let us write a table. So, first of all, uh, 
pointwise. I write here u0, w, epsilon u1. And here I wrote order. Order 1, epsilon power 0. It's everywhere of order 1. Here, also of order 1. Because, in principle, it decays far away from the point. But near to the point, it's of order 1. So, and since we have pointwise norm, so we search for a maximum, we have to, to take into account small region as a whole domain. So, this is the lack of this norm. Not, not, not in any case, because, for example, if you speak about fracture, then it must be pointwise estimated. Because if stresses are too high, even in one point, not in one point, in a small region, then body is broken. And then there is no necessity to know that in other part it is small stresses, because it's enough to have large stresses at one point. Uh, there is a following very interesting example, which happens in real life. Uh, so in Norway, where I, I, I was happy to be uh, three, four weeks ago, uh, they used to, to, to create very huge, uh, huge platforms for oil. Uh, so, and this platform stands on huge legs. I draw one leg. And there was some, some crash of a platform because of one point only. They have some, some hole in this which was covered with, 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 with a cap. But this cap was destroyed because of rye. And water come inside. So one point is enough to break the huge pole. So that's why I speak about point-wise estimate. I show you that our work was, was incorrect, but uh, not incorrect, incomplete. But this means that if you wish to make point-wise estimate, you have to, to take into account next term of boundary layer. And if you consider, we will see later on, if you will consider uh, eigenvalues, for example, then without next term, nothing can be done. Okay, and this is a photo of epsilon 1. So, and of course we can forget about this term if we estimate a remainder in point wise. But now, let us speak about energy. Energy norm means this thing. I wrote it short now, it's not convenient, right? Uh, energy means this thing, it's a directly uh, integral, so uh, no, uh, square of norm of gradient in L2. So here, of course, epsilon zero. Nothing can be added. Here, epsilon one. And what is here? So we need to calculate. So integral from epsilon. No, it, it's approximate calculation of, from epsilon to 1. So d over dr, now we calculate in spherical coordinate, coordinates. What does it mean here w? w something of order r, 1 over r. Epsilon on the, no, no epsilon, uh, epsilon on the top because it's epsilon divided by r. So this term is of order epsilon divided by modulo x and modulo x I denote by r. So squared, r squared, this is Jacobian, dr. So this is the approximate integral. Of course, integration over sphere gives nothing, is something like 4 pi. So this is the main order of this. So we have epsilon squared 
I took it out. This is of order 1 over r squared. 1 over r squared is of order, uh, must be squared, 1 over, okay, I will write, because I, I, I am now afraid to make a mistake, because you do see everything. So this is approximate. Of course, uh, it is necessary to make more precise calculation, but I only want to show. So what is here? It's 1 over r squared. While integrating, you get 1 over epsilon. So finally, it's of order epsilon power 1. So Dirichlet norm equalizes these two terms. In energy norm, they are of the same order. So now, looking back to our construction, we discover that we are genius because we, we, we predicted this thing. We constructed just we need to estimate uh, to estimate an energy norm. Okay, let us go ahead and let us estimate in L2 norm. So nothing else but these things here. What is here? Again, some waving hands calculation, but result is correct. So it's integral from epsilon to 1, epsilon over r squared. Uh, what is bad here is that it's not energy norm, but energy norm squared, uh, which I estimate. So then r squared dr. Because this integral now converge, previous integral was diverging, so that's why 1 over epsilon. But here you can send epsilon to zero. Okay? So now we are again at the point that we have done monkey job. Because if we are interested in L2 norm, then there was no need uh, to construct. But nevertheless, we can excuse ourselves because I do not see any reason to find u1 of uh, x without constructing this term. So, uh, you see that the table shows us that point of view crucially influence the asymptotic ansatz. In this case, we have to. Uh, I, I, I would like to erase my previous comments and uh, to make conclusion again. First case, erase because there's no need. Second case, everything is kept. And third case, arrays. So, in dependence on the norm, you have to do different things. And now we will have examples. What we have to estimate, what space we have to choose in order to control certain functions. Because in principle, Discussing with mechanicians, I have understood that they never are interested in a solution. They always are interested in uh, functionals on solutions. So maximum of solution, maximum of stresses, capacity of something, mean value of something, and so on and so forth. Eigenvalues, 
is also a function. I also want to comment that this, my viewpoint, uh, does not accept convergence theories. Because, as, as, the, as the final result for asymptotic analysis, because uh, convergence theorems usually speak about energy. But now let us consider certain functionals which are very far away from energy. And uh, if we speak about modeling, this is a different thing, completely different thing. Then uh, we will find that, uh, unfortunately, conversion theorem cannot help us. So, first, first consideration, A. So, writing energy, I provoke you to think that we will use this code. And this is wrong. We will use this code. What does it mean, energy, in our case? Energy is the uh, Dirichlet integral minus What I want to say is that the choice of energy crucially depends on the boundary conditions. In the case of uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions, it's worth to speak about energy. But I would like to call it energy still, in order to avoid uh, difficulties which, which appear due to just the energy function. It, it's worth to write here minus and here minus to speak about other things, but let us consider this function. Uh, looking at this, uh, one can imagine immediately that one needs to, to use this estimate. But of course this is wrong, because you can integrate by parts and using the green formula which declares that uh, delta u epsilon point u epsilon dx without point, it's a scalar problem, omega epsilon is equal to integral minus gradient u epsilon gradient u epsilon dx omega plus integral over u epsilon d u epsilon over dn normal derivative dsx and this is zero, so this is equal to this. And uh, in our case, it's minus integral over omega epsilon um, f u epsilon dx. So one can easily see that this is equal. Now I erase this calculation. And now we can either use this column for uh, point-wise estimate, but this is the first uh, attempt. As, as I say, I'm not happy with this disorder. But also we can use the following thing. It's equal to one half 
integral over omega f of x u0 of x plus w of x over epsilon plus epsilon u1 of x dx plus 1 half integral over epsilon and over omega h omega epsilon sorry f multiplied with u wave of dx so I took the things which has been prepared wrote here and uh, now I want to get estimation of this term so avoiding long and nasty calculations not very long but since we have got this table it's possible to uh, to, to, to speak quicker uh, so first of all I estimate this term using the rule of the next term the rule of the next term is the following that since we have expansion in epsilon what is left is just the next term next term is epsilon power 3 epsilon power 2 so epsilon power 2 is just the arrow of our representation it can be justified it can be written even a bit no it's just this now what is this this term a1 and this term a1 is nothing by the way I'm sorry I forgot to write that energy is denoted by this this is the uh, best notation for energy so here it stands E of u0 omega epsilon we want to put here 0 fine but now only this plus one half integral of f of x uh, omega of x over epsilon dx and plus one half epsilon integral over omega epsilon omega epsilon uh, u1 of x f of x and plus o of epsilon in power two. first of all if I change here epsilon for zero what I add or subtract from the right hand side it's a measure of this small domain which is epsilon power 3 multiply with maximum of this function u and u is smooth function so it's of order epsilon 3 so we can change epsilon for 0 here without any problem because we have got even less as a remainder so here again we have smooth function multiplied with f of x which is also L2 so it's okay and here we have small region again here we can change epsilon for 0 while thinking about uh, remainder to be included into this whole capital now the only question which is left is to know about this integral how to proceed in principle the idea is the same this function is decaying so main part of this function is located near to the small zone which of order epsilon in power 3 so this means that we can forget about this term and send to the remainder otherwise what is to do is just to make dilution of variables and due to the change of coordinates they appear factor epsilon power 3 coming from dx so dx will be equal to epsilon in power 3 dx and then u is bounded w is decaying in decaying with r1 over r square integrate gain additional epsilon minus 1 
but epsilon power 3 multiplied with epsilon minus 1 is just epsilon square, so we can forget about this term. So now we have uh, arrived for the following formula. And this is just worth to, to stop here uh, and to speak a little bit, because uh, working out this formula will be done next lecture because it needs much more explanation. So the formula reads as follows. P of u epsilon omega epsilon is equal to P of u0 omega 0 plus epsilon integral over omega 1 half, sorry, um, u1 of x f of x the x so with the the first correction term is here this is in for any function uh, this formula allows us to construct models of small defects in terms of potential of zero radius and this will be the topic of the next lecture. Now, again, certain comments about this table. This table is crucial for this consideration because, again, it gives the main idea that L2 norm, for example, is worse for this estimation. And we see that there is no trace in final formula of boundary layer, only through capacity. Capacity will appear here finally. Uh, so, uh, there is also a possibility to treat weighted spaces. Uh, we see that uh, also in our asymptotic decomposition, these two terms Sorry. These two terms are of the same order in epsilon. There is epsilon power 1 at, at on u1, but there is nothing here. They are of the same order. So that point wise, they are of the same order. But if you, if you have uh, integral norms, you have different orders. There is a possibility, while justifying a synthetic formula, to use weighted, so-called weighted quadratic spaces. And uh, those are the spaces, for example, B1 beta of omega epsilon with a norm. You have norm in L2 of gradient, but multiplied with the weight F in power to beta plus r in power 2 beta minus 1 north of v squared. And then this is dx, and here stands integral. What is a uh, useful point here? This norm, because of this factor, r minus 1 additional, you can write in this way, taking r in power beta out, equalize these norms. No, of course, it was possible with the uh, gradient here function itself, but asymptotically, with respect to consideration of this thing, they will be the same. Is it, it possible to see that if you put here, uh, if you consider this norm is beta equal to 1, then you have to put here epsilon 1. So, estimation in V norm will be of the following type. And in a certain extent, it's very convenient to use estimates in weighted spaces. But fortunately for us, we need not to, to use this technique, and we can uh, go ahead using the third code. So thank you very much for your attention.